So ask God for grace. He'll give you, he'll, he'll give it to you. And just write your thoughts down and then ask God to give you the grace to put it together uh, into a book. like excessive belching or feeling like someone's actually trying to stop my prayers. And so as I got stronger in intercession, it became stronger when I'm praying, when I'm not praying. And so I fasted, I prayed, I asked the Lord to bring solution. So I was just trying to see what can I possibly do. Okay, have you gone through any deliverance? Okay, um, you've had people pray for you for deliverance? Um, yes, but not specifically for this. Just Okay, I, I, I recommend that you actually uh, sit, anytime you're dealing with something that you can't overcome, sit down with someone that knows about their deliverance and have them pray. If you don't know the name of a spirit, just describe what it's doing. You know demons by their names or their description. And go through deliverance. Most people, the problem we have is most people have never really gone through deliverance. Because churches don't practice deliverance, they really do deliverance. So sometimes if you're getting deliverance, uh, it's not because someone is praying for you, it's because you're pressing into the things of God, praying, fasting, and the Spirit of God is actually initiating the deliverance. But it's, it's much better to sit down with someone that really knows and begin to pray specifically uh, for those deliverances. And most people sometimes don't have access to that because churches don't have workers, people don't understand deliverance. They'll tell you it doesn't take all that, you don't need deliverance. But um, have someone sit down with you and pray specifically. Describe to them what they're doing. And then when they pray for you, let them move uh, in the gifts of the Spirit. Because sometimes when you're casting out devils, one of the uh, greatest gifts is the word of knowledge. God will give you word of knowledge concerning the demons that are interrupting the person's life. And you can identify them by the Spirit and call them out. Sometimes you name things that come to you that the person never heard of. Um, uh, I remember years ago, we dealt with a, de uh, a demon um, called photocopy. And this demon basically was a demon that causes people to imitate other people, like taking a photocopy or a Xerox copy. So sometimes you have some very unusual, you know, names of demons. Needle in the haystack, I'm hard to find. You know, uh, possum, I play dead. You know, demons like that. You know, and you get names like that, and you call them out, and people will get delivered. So uh, it's a supernatural ministry uh, with the gifts of the Spirit. And um, sometimes a person praying for you will start going into areas that you're not even aware of in your life, but they'll do it by the Spirit of God. It could be hurt. It could be witchcraft. It could be trauma. It could be fear. It could be a number of things that you're not even aware of, but the Spirit of God can expose it, and um, you can get delivered. Uh, from it. So I sit down with someone and if it's really bothering you, have them pray for you, describe to them what what's happening and let them pray for you and let them take you through a time of deliverance. Thank you. Sometimes it can't be, but if, if something is happening that's unusual, um, it could be prophetic. A quarter can actually represent a season because the the um, the year is divided into four quarters. And then, you know, a basketball game has uh, uh, four quarters or uh, two halves, um, but a quarter can represent a season. It can represent a season of your life. If God wants to do something in this season of your life, something new, something fresh. 
So it, it, could, it could have a number of, um, of meanings. Um, I've had people, for instance, um, one person kept finding dimes um, in, in their home or, or something unusual, and, and the Lord would, would speak to them prophetically. Um, I, would be, I would be careful that you don't go overboard, you know, because then you get flaky and everything becomes prophetic. But if it's something that catches your attention, um, God can use that to speak to you. And um, so again, as she's been saying, ask God, you know, what does this mean, Lord? Um, depend on God. To be, if it's from God, he'll reveal it to you. Ask him, are you trying to tell me something? Are you trying? Because she talks about dreams, but God can show you a lot of things when you're awake too. And I believe the reason why dreams sometimes are so important is because often God can't get our attention when we're awake. And so he waits for us to go to sleep and we have no defense. He can just invade our dreams. Because when we're awake, we're so busy, we don't listen. God is trying to get our attention. And so he waits. That's why I think the dream life is so important because sometimes God has to wait until you sleep before he can really get your attention. But God can also speak to us while we're awake um, and um, give us some unusual prophetic things um, just by, you know, seeing things, uh, quarters, dimes, pennies, change. I mean, if you start finding a lot of change, God may be saying, I'm trying to change you. You know, so, you know, you can be, be open to it and ask God to show it to you if it's of him and then he'll reveal it to you. Well, let me tell you, I, I remember now the, 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 the dime, I'm sorry, the dime. Uh, a lady kept finding two dimes and she asked the Lord and the Lord gave her the word paradigm because two dimes is a pair. Paradigm. Mm. And the Lord saying, I want to change your paradigm. So sometimes, wow. sometimes the, the words come together and God can use a paradigm to speak to you about a paradigm that he wow. wants to change your life. So sometimes, yeah, you, you have to really be open because it's very prophetic and allow God to give you uh, the meaning and the interpretation of it. Wow. I'm in a church right now that um, the man is not believe. ready to listen or you want to hear they're not going to so one step you might want to take uh, one is make sure that you're called to do that that's what God is calling you to do Two, you know I believe if the Lord wants me to speak to someone I always ask the Holy Spirit to open the door I ask the Lord to prepare their heart and open the door for us to have the conversation and the God gives you wisdom in dealing with leadership if I'm called to do that um, I'm not sure that necessarily I really believe by the time you have uh, people who are in leadership, the God will usually use other leaders a lot of times to speak to them. But if you, if you believe God's calling you, one, make sure you're calling you. Two, ask the Holy Spirit really to open the door for the conversation to take place. Unless you just burst in and say, Thus saith the Lord! <laughs> Head. Um, first of all, I just want to say really quickly, thank you. You interpreted my dream about the three black lions, and it came to pass just recently, so thank you. That was about two months ago. But I'd like to ask this simple question, I think, for my sister, if you don't mind. And it was uh, waking up within a dream and an angel washing your feet. Is that too much of a dream? I'm going to be disobedient. Uh, say it again now? Within a dream, waking up while you're in a dream. So within a dream that you were talking about. She woke up in the dream. Correct. And an angel washing her feet. Okay, so she's dreaming and then she, she was asleep or she sleep in the dream? I'm just trying to figure it out. She's sleeping in the dream. And then she woke up in the dream and the angel was there. 
Yes, washing up. Okay, a lot of times we talk about washing feet, right? We know the Lord washes feet and he calls us to serve, right? He got so he's a servant and he washes feet. So a lot of times people think about washing feet and drink. God calls her to be a servant, servant position. He wants her to begin to serve. And I say that a lot of times we don't want to take servant positions, but servants are elevated positions, right? Christ himself washed feet, right? And so he also be washing feet away from doing our feet and dreams. When we don't have shoes on, it's because our, our walk is harder. So then they also mean in this dream that the Lord is going to show her how he's going to begin to make her walk a little easier. He's going to begin to remove the debris, remove the silver, remove the hardness that she's gone through in her life and begin to wash that thing away. Okay. Uh, earlier, we gave, a, oh, you gave an example about uh, how to walk in interpreting dreams by interpreting your own dreams first. Um, and then also we had the activation. Uh, in the prophetic, which was walking us to the train of uh, how to move in that. How, what advice would you give as far as doing that in your in your home church? You don't want it to be out of order, just start to pop sign people left and right. What would you say as far as starting to practice in the prophetic or, or even moving in apostolic things? Would it be better to wait for someone to call you through those things or, you know, start to church? start doing those things or what advice would you give us for that? Okay. Um, remember the gifts of the Spirit are given to minister and bless people. So I believe that when you get activated uh, in, in the different dimensions of the Spirit, God will give you opportunity. He'll actually send people to you that need prophetic ministry. Um, when you're equipped by God, God will make sure people find you. He will send people to you. So you'll have plenty of opportunity to minister to people. When you're praying for them, if they ask you to pray for them, or you get a word for them, you tell them I have something for you, um, you, you would think that should not be a problem in a church. Um, but sometimes it is. If the culture of the church is that you are not allowed to minister to anyone without the permission of leadership, mm -hmm. uh, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, because then God is limited, they're limiting God. If God sends you people, you know, what do you do? Do you take them to the leadership and say, I got a word for this person, can I be released? You know, give it to them. And they say, well, I'll be back in touch with you within 48 hours or set an appointment with me three weeks, I'll let you know. So it depends on the culture of the church. I wouldn't recommend that you just go into a church that may not be moving in the prophetic and start prophesying over anyone. Because it may cause confusion, especially if people don't understand it. But if God begins to send people to you and you find the opportunity to bless people, you have to let your gift flow. And then in that case, you're not, you're not actively trying to promote your ministry or just looking for people to prophesy over, but you're actually responding to people who are coming to you. And if someone comes to you, and your defense can be, well, they came for me for prayer and I, I prayed for them and God gave me a word. And no one should be able to fight against that. If you're running around just laying hands on people, saying I got a word for all of you, then they can say, well, you're just, you know, doing things to uh, minister without our permission. But if people are coming to you and you're not, you're not actively trying to impress people or seek out people, but God makes a way for you to minister, then you really, your defense is, you know, what am I supposed to do to people? But if they come to prayer or if I pray for them and um, I get a word, what am I supposed to do? I've got to release what God has for me. And if people have a problem with that, then the issue will be um, sometimes I believe that God allows things like that to happen so that people realize that they have no liberty in their church to do anything. And if you have no liberty, then you may be faced with a decision to leave that church or go somewhere where you do have liberty. And sometimes God does expose that when you get anointed. Um, it's very difficult sometimes to be anointed and have gifts in some churches. Because when you begin to operate in them, people have a problem with it. And then it could be God says, I can't have you stay here because you can't die uh, in your gift. You may have to leave and go somewhere else. So sometimes one of the worst things you can do uh, for church membership is to get upgraded. Because when you get upgraded and you go back to a church that's against anything prophetic or deliverance, you're gonna have a problem and God's gonna have to, to move you away. Um, I don't have that problem because 
Personally, I would never attend a church that doesn't flow in anything. Personally, me. I just don't have time for it. Some of you all are great saints. Y'all sit up in dead churches for years. I wish I had your patience. I wish I had your grace. I don't. I would refuse to sit in a church that doesn't move in anything. I, 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 I would run, I would, I'd rather at, be at home watching Andy Griffin. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. And then you can see I just stirred up when we talk about this stuff. <laughs> Again, you've got to push into the gift. If you have a prophetic gift, you're just not tapping into it all the way. 
So it, what's going to happen is you probably either have dreams about it, you don't remember the dream until right. you wake up and, it, and something happens. You go, oh, I remember that. What you are showing, what that is showing is that you are, this is a gift of yours that you're not pushing into. So you have a lot of it a lot of times before you push fully into the gift. Most of us here are either in the beginning stages or some have been in their um, gifting or their calling for a long period of time. So with both of you, if you could share with us if there's some nuggets of wisdom, things that you wish you knew when you first started out, you wish someone had told you, are there any nuggets of those types that you can share with us as we're growing in our calling and our gifting? Well, for me, I think um, don't be afraid to make a mistake. I think I was really concerned when I first had the dream interpretation that I would mess up, so I didn't do it. I didn't say it out loud, I wouldn't say it. That really does hinder you, right? You really have to not be afraid to push into your gift. You might make a mistake, it doesn't mean you're a false prophet, it doesn't mean you don't know what you're talking about.